that you ready for this man hey guys welcome to another episode of big vapors and in this episode we're actually going to talk about battery safety basic handling maintenance uh etc now, I'm going to make this video as quick as I can. I mean, I could easily talk 30 minutes or more about batteries. I think, in fact, most of us who know anything about batteries uh, probably can. I'm also going to say I am by no means an expert. I am, not an, I am not a chemist. I am not an electrician. I am just a hobbyist. I'm just passionate, and I've done a lot of research, and I've read a lot about this uh, recently because I've just been thinking about it. I've had no real issues, and I don't uh, have anything negative to say, but I think it's something that's important and should be discussed, and uh, I think this is a great little video for those, uh, whether you're new or not, uh, to vaping and mods and batteries. Uh, it's just some, some good information, some good stuff to know, and some good things to think about. So these are basically tips more than anything else. All right, so let's get started. I posed this question on, um, on a couple different forums because I was curious to see what people thought, and I posed a few different questions in terms of uh, battery safety. And, you know, we hear a lot of negative stuff about e-cigs and batteries in the news a lot about things exploding in people's spaces and fires being caused, etc., etc. But the thing we all need to remember is that batteries can be dangerous, period. Regardless of whether or not they're a laptop battery, a cell phone battery, batteries in your kids' toys, uh, the, your car battery, or the battery in your mod. Batteries are all, for the most part, built the same way, and they all have the same basic specifications. They're all based on a volt, an ampage, a milliamp, etc. So batteries just need to be treated and taken care of like any other uh, device. So let's talk about some of these different things. So real quickly, the questions that I pose, I'm just going to go through those uh, one at a time, give you my answer, and give you the most common answer that I received uh, across the web. I, I did it in three ways. Um, I posted this on New Vapor Form, I posted this on Electric Cigarette Form, on ECF, and I posted a poll on my blog. And I wanted to hit a wide range of people um, from all different areas, from different styles of vaping and non-vapers, even just people who use batteries in general to get a good uh, segment, a wide range of responses. So these are the responses that I got. So the first question I asked was, do you charge overnight? Personally, I do sometimes. It really depends on when I start my charge and how long I'm asleep for, etc. Um, I have a Trust Fire Rapid Charger, and I own both Ultra Fire Safe Chemistry uh, 18650 3.7 volt uh, batteries, and I own two AW17670 protected 3 volt batteries. And I have left those batteries in my Trust Fire Rapid uh, Charger overnight a uh, few times. Um, is it the safest thing to do? No, but I know that my battery has uh, it's a smart, or sorry, my charger is a smart charger, and I know that once the batteries hit full capacity, it's going to switch into a trickle mode. And I also know that my batteries are protected and or safe chemistry, so I'm not 100% concerned. Plus, I make sure when I plug my charger into the wall, it's not plugged into 15 other things, though it is plugged into a power surge protector. So there are layers of protection on uh, my scenario of charging. But it's still not necessarily the safest thing in the world. I don't leave the house when I'm charging, um, but I don't necessarily sit by my batteries and watch them charge. So answers that I got on this varied from I never leave my batteries uh, unattended. I always sit there and wait for them to charge. I always make sure that if I'm charging my batteries, I'm in the house. When I do so, I don't leave the house. Um, and then some people said, yeah, sometimes I forget or sometimes I charge them overnight because I know that... You know, they need uh, 8, 10 hours of charging, and by the time I charge them and wake up, everything should be okay. Even if they overcharge for about an hour, it's not the end of the world. Now, again, we're talking about mod-style batteries. If you're talking about, like, your 650 ma or 900 or 1000 ma Ego batteries, a bit different. They use a different kind of charger. These are protected chargers. Uh, at least the specifications say they are protected chargers, and they should, once the battery's in full capacity, even if the light's green, they should go into trickle charge mode, and there should be no real issues. I have heard myths of people's egos melting. Look, anything can happen, but it's very, very rare. It's very rare in general for even our mod batteries to explode or melt down. Uh, typically, it happens if they're just not taken care of properly. Uh, you know, things like getting them wet, throwing them in a fire, not storing them properly, being stupid, right? Use common sense and logic. The next question I asked was, 
do you use a lipo safe charging bag these are lipo safe charging bags you most of the vendors uh, provide these uh, you can pretty much get them anywhere and essentially it's a bag that protects uh, your charger while it's charging so you actually stick your charger inside of this bag uh, while it's charging <clears throat> I'm not going to go into the science behind it but it's similar to like those static bags uh, for those of you familiar with purchasing hardware for computers or other electronic devices when you buy like a memory board or a graphics card or something it comes inside those like static bags works on the same basic premise it's to protect it from surge any kind of outside interference dirt anything that might come in contact with uh, the batteries or the charger and create an issue so common answers I don't use them the answers I got were I've been thinking about it don't own one yet but it's on my list um, some people said they use it, and I was surprised to see how many people did not even know what they are. Actually, I'm not surprised. A lot of people don't even know what they are, but looked into it after I had asked the question. So that's what another, uh, another alternative or another thing that you can do, one more layer of protection when it comes to your batteries. The next question I asked was, do you prefer protected or safe chemistry batteries, or does it make a difference to you? So let's quickly talk about that. Protected batteries. <clears throat> Protected batteries actually have a circuit module, and this is the circuit module here, and it is inside of the battery. So it'll be at the bottom of the battery, and you'll feel a dimple there where that is. Uh, the battery itself should also say on the side, protected battery. My AW17670 say protected, and you can feel the dimple around the edges. Um, but essentially, what it does is it has a cutoff. Uh, this chip essentially will it's it's it will detect when the battery um, is overheating overcharging at capacity if there's a surge if it's venting gas etc etc uh, and it's a layer of protection to stop the battery from going into meltdown mode I'm not going to go into the full science you can look it up I'll put links and stuff in the description to all of these websites that I'm showing you but essentially it protected battery has a circuit on it so if you want to take a you know, uh, take a look at a bigger picture here oh and it's not going to show me the bigger picture now Yay for the internet. Anyways, protected battery. Now, safer chemistry, a little different. This is an interesting diagram uh, I came across. Um, safer chemistry refers to the fact that there is no circuit board in there. It's not protected in the sense that it has another mechanism of security or safety, but it's in terms of the chemistry that is used to create and produce this battery. So here is a interesting little diagram going back to 1859, bit of a history on batteries, uh, the different kinds of batteries from lead all the way up to now, which are our lithium ion based and looking further into the future into terms of things like lithium air and lithium organic batteries. So the chemistry used in the battery is what quantifies that as a safer or safe chemistry uh, battery. So it's been inspected, it's been checked, and the chemical compounds used to create that battery are considered safe, which means there's less chance of those uh, batteries producing uh, flammable uh, gas or a gas that's poisonous to breathe in or the battery itself going into complete meltdown or exploding. So that's what safer chemistry means. But remember, for both of these style batteries, Anything can still happen. Batteries are still batteries. Okay, the next question I asked was, um, how do you store your batteries? Where do you store your batteries? So I personally just have them in little plastic containers, not like this, but they're just like plastic containers I got at the dollar store, and I have them standing up, and I have them in rotation so that I know which batteries to use next the order that they've been charged in and when a battery needs to be charged I charge the battery and always remember side tip always remember to let your batteries rest after they charge so once it comes off the charger let it rest for a while don't use it right away give it some time um, and you'll get a much better vape off of it as well plus less strain on the battery gives it a longer life expectancy so these are really cheap as you can see $1.99 pretty much the same at any vendor wherever you go online but a great way to store your batteries this way the batteries aren't touching positive negative ends don't touch there's no way for it to get a current it's inside of a plastic container uh, it's ventable and if there was an issue at most the plastic container will start to get hot and melt a bit but long before fire explosion or anything else you would see your melting battery case plus great safe way to carry batteries around with you um, but you know you should never leave your batteries sitting inside your car on a hot summer day you you shouldn't leave them sitting by the pool where they can get knocked in and fall into the water. Again, common sense, basic logic. Um, okay, sorry, that was not one of the questions. Uh, one of the other questions that I asked were, do you remove uh, bats from your mod when they're not in use? 
Oh, believe it or not, a lot of people do this. I read this. When they're not using their mods, they take the batteries out mm -hmm. uh, just to protect it from a current or a surge or whatever. Personally, I leave them in. I think it's a pain in the ass to have to do that. Some people say they leave the batteries in, but they just unscrew the cardo or add a little bit so that it can't make a full current connection and cause any kind of meltdown because the resistancy on your uh, cardo or addy can also lead two problems in the battery. Plus, always make sure that you have mods that are, have built-in security features that actually have holes for venting, etc., so that they're safe mods and they can handle the batteries that are putting inside of it. So common answers were no. Most people do not do that, but some people do. Uh, the next question was that I asked, <clears throat> kind of did this out of order, um, how do you tell if your batteries, sorry, uh, what brand uh, do you prefer and why? You know what? This is a very personal thing. People like all different kinds of battery types. I have uh, 18650 Trust Fires, uh, Ultra Fire, sorry, uh, 3800 mAh, 3.7 volts that I use in my Omega. Then I have AW Protected 17670 3.7 volt batteries that I use on my um, Prodigy, for example. Um, the Ultra Fires. They came with it, so that's what I'm using, and I've done some research in them, and they're fine batteries. The AWs was what I was recommended. Um, the <clears throat> top two batteries that people tend to seem to like or prefer are A-dubs and um, Sony, sorry, Panasonics. Uh, those seem to be the ones that are the most common ones that people use. But again, buying batteries, you know, buy batteries based on what the vendor you purchase your mod from recommends. If it's recommended that you use certain kinds of batteries, try going with that. Buy your batteries from uh, reputable uh, vendors, people that are trustworthy, that have good recommendations, where people haven't had problems before. Never, 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 never get your batteries from Alibaba because like 99.9% .9 of the stuff on Alibaba is fake or dangerous and you shouldn't be using it. If the battery costs a buck, there's a reason why it costs a buck. These batteries should cost somewhere between five, ten dollars a piece depending on the battery. You want to make sure that you're getting something that's worth it. I personally buy mm -hmm. uh, my batteries uh, from various different places and I'll put the links in in the description of this video as to uh, where uh, I buy my batteries but of course you can get them from most vendors and usually they come with your mods. Then finally what kind of charger do you use? I use a Trustfire rapid charger. Uh, it's like a $15 charger. I like it because it has two volt settings and it has two MOS settings and it fits pretty much any kind of battery. Uh, it's not a bad charger um, the other ones that came up quite often were the TR, I think they were the TR001s and the um, X-Stars. Uh, let me just quickly scroll down here, but I think that's what it was. It was the X-Star, yeah, the X-Star WP2, uh, very common battery that also came up. And of course, uh, if you haven't heard of them, Pila, Pila chargers, P-I-L-A. They are considered to be the top-end chargers. I'm not going to say that that's guaranteed or whatever, but that's what people seem t tend to say. And uh, they'll cost you 40, 50 bucks, but they're worth it. They're like a lifetime investment and they're considered the safest, they're safest chargers uh, to purchase on the market and durable. And uh, like I said, they last a very, very long time. So those are the questions. Those were the answers. Just some great stuff to think about uh, when, you're, when you're getting into this. Other things to think about too, stuff that you might want to have around the house, a voltmeter so that you can, you know, test your, uh, you know, test your batteries test your mod to your Cardos and your Addies. You might also want to get a multimeter uh, to test your batteries pre-charge and after charge to see you know if they're charging properly. Always want to let your uh, batteries rest for a little while before you use them. I mean just common sense, logic, things you want to think about. Learn a little bit about ohms and how that resistancy of ohms on your Addies and your Cardos and Clearmizers etc can affect the kind of battery you're using so the voltage versus the milliamp hours etc. I've got some great literature here that I'll put in the descriptions. This is a good one from MIT, a guide to understanding battery specifications. Um, this is a really great place. It's called All About Circuits. Here's a little chart here to give you a better understanding of currents, voltage, and resistance. I mean, none of this stuff is rocket science. It might be over a lot of people's heads. A lot of it's over my head. But if you do a bit of reading, you'll get the basic understanding and what you need to know um, just to be safe when it comes to using your batteries and how you maintain them and how you handle them and store them. Guide to Vaping, also really great article here on e-cigs, uh, mods, batteries, and safe vaping tips and tricks, things to think about. Uh, Battery University, if you're getting into building mods, I mean, this is the place that mod builders pretty much recommend as a great resource. Tons of information on uh, batteries and battery safety, etc., etc., etc. 
So that's my video. I hope that helps noobs. I hope that helps anyone coming into it. I mean, I did a bit of research when I first started getting into mods, wanted to understand. I mean, going through a pen style mod that's like 350 mods to a to a, an 1100 mod ego and then making that jump up to bigger batteries and, and mods, you know, you want to know about this stuff. You want to know what kinds of chargers to use, what kinds of batteries to use, where to store them, things to think about and how to be careful, but also don't worry, don't take it so seriously, because you know what? Batteries are batteries. Again, your laptop, your cell phone, your kids' toys, any of these batteries can be dangerous, can explode, can melt, but it's very, very rare. Just take care of it like you would take care of anything else. So that's this episode of Big Vapors. I hope you learned something. If you've got anything at all to add to this discussion, please put it in the comments. I'd love to hear more or find the threads on the forums. So follow me on Twitter, at Digibomb. Check out the website, bigvapors.wordpress.com. I'll see you all on the flip side. And even though this had nothing to do with vaping, I'm going to leave you with a little bit of vaping just because. Mm-hmm. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, yeah. Rugged Cowboy from Gentleman's Reserve. All right, guys. See you on the flip side. Keep vaping and be safe. All right. Y'all ready for this, man? What a day. What a day. What a day.